welcome um welcome to the community on this video i'm going to be talking to you about dealing with impatience so i put a post up yesterday i think it was a pretty powerful post and um i wanted to just elaborate a little bit more so if you've been struggling with impatience anxiety or fear it's time to keep watching hello everybody okay let me check my top again I know it's been a minute since I have been live. I've been busy. But I have a few moments today. So here I am. I'm also going to take a couple of your questions. So um, I put a sticker in my story yesterday. And I told you that I would be going live to answer those questions. So if you have a question, type it into the question box. All right. I'm glad How to Heal a Broken Heart has been blessing you. So for those of you who don't know, my name is Sarita Foxworth. I am an author and a life coach and my hair is not shedding. What is the word? What is it called when it comes out by the root? Yeah, that is shedding. It's not breaking, it's shedding. Anyway. Um, so I have written 11 books that will help you in your, your walk of faith as you're awaiting your husband to find you in this season and um the book that she's talking about in the comments is called how to heal a broken heart so if you've been struggling with having a broken heart and getting healing total healing in christ jesus go to the link in my bio you can look at all the books how to heal a broken heart how to prepare for your future husband is the most popular book that i have um as a matter of fact i'm gonna talk a little bit about that book on today as i talk about how to deal with impatience um, so the question came up. Let me pull it up real quick. Oh, no. Is it gone? Has it been an hour? Shoot. Oh, I think that it is gone. Yeah, it is. Doggone it. I wonder, is it here? Let me see. Okay. All right. Oh, shoot. Can y'all see that? You can't even see it. Um, ah, oh, it's so humongous. But the question is, how do you have patience when waiting on God to move and send your husband to find you? So that was the question that came up yesterday in my, in my, um, in my story. And when I was answering her question, I was trying to go, I went back through all of my IGTV videos. So even though I have not been live, I have done over a hundred videos between my YouTube page in this Instagram page that answer a lot of hot topic questions for women of God who desire to be married, who also love God. So let me be clear about who I'm talking to. Um, and I was looking for a video where I only talked about impatience and I didn't see one. So it was really important to me to do a video where I only talked about impatience. Um, meaning where I really focus on helping you uh, not to be so impatient. Now... I remember what I said, so I'll just I'll, I'll I'll just go ahead and jump right in. What I told the young lady in the comment of this particular response, so I responded to my story and then I posted it on my page. What I told her in the comment was, a lot of times women of God are impatient concerning your husband, or by the way, this would apply to any other area that you might be impatient about. You could be impatient about a job that you're in faith for. You could be impatient about getting healing in your body. You could be impatient about some dream it is that you had that has not manifested yet in your life. And the response is always going to be the same coming from me. If you ask me, what should I do about being impatient? Number one, what I have found, because I also, and I'm a life coach, so let me go ahead and put that out there. And I've been working with women, it's 2021, I started in 2010. So 11 years working with women, single women, focusing on these specific areas for 11 years. So I have a lot of experience. And so with that being said, what I have found is that there's a lot of women of God who are busy in this season, but you're busy with the wrong things. And so because you're busy with the wrong things, you struggle with becoming impatient. Because you you fill your days, right? Your days are full, but your days are not full with the right things, which is why you feel you start to struggle with impatience. You're like, well, I've been in faith, but it hasn't happened yet. My husband has not found me yet. When is he coming? Why is he not yet here? 
And um, when you are busy with the right things, you do not struggle with impatience, right? Now, let me also add some balance to this. All right, let me take this down because you can't even see it anyway. It's so huge. Um, I want to go into more detail. You know what? Hold on. Let me grab. I need to grab another device so I can look at the whole thing in front of me. How are you guys doing today? How is everybody? How are you all doing? Is everyone doing well? I hope so. Okay. Let me just open this up so I can see. See exactly what I put in my comment. So I can read it. I want to read it to you. And I'm going to take it down. Melody's doing good. Hello from Indonesia. Janelle's doing good. Yeah, you jumped on right on time because I haven't been live in quite some time. All right, let me take this down. Okay. All right. So, um, let me pray real quick. And then I'll get back to um, my notes and the things that are on my mind. But um, I like to pray. I have a lot of things on my mind right now. And sometimes I have found that it is good to just, when you have a lot of thoughts going through your mind, you have a lot of uh, choices and decisions to make, or you're struggling to find peace, quiet, to just go into prayer for a couple of seconds. It really helps you to focus. It helps me to focus anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and open up in prayer and then I'm going to get back to what I'm talking about on today. But if you have any additional questions, I only have a little while to be with you on today. But if you do have any additional questions, you can type them into the question bubble at the bottom and I'll try to get to it after I finish talking about impatience. Okay. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the opportunity to speak into the lives of my sisters on today. I pray that she will use me as a vessel. Let these be your words, O oh Lord, all of you and none of me. I pray that any word that comes directly from your spirit will be planted as a seed of faith into the hearts of my sisters and help them to overcome impatience. I also pray that you will give me words to help them to overcome fear and anxiety and that they will have the peace of God as they stand in faith, trusting and believing that you are a good God who loves them, that you are going to manifest in your perfect timing, in their due season, and that even in the in the season of waiting, in the process of time, that you have your hand on their lives and you got them right now. As they spend their days devoted in you, as we should sit, spend the season of singleness, God, you will help us to be patient and to be restful and to thrive in life and to enjoy this season as much as we can as we await every promise and blessing it is that you have laid up for us in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so how do you have patience? Right when you're waiting on God to move and bring your husband to find you. Excuse the stuff in the background. I know. It probably look a little crazy. You know, other people background have candles and bookshelves. Listen, I'm a single mom. Okay, it's real life over here. Not that they don't have real life, but I don't have no studio. So what's that? That is a tablet on the charger. And that's my other tablet on the charger and a basket full of face masks. Okay, so anyway, um, <clears throat> when you are busy with the right things in life, it will fill you up on the inside to the point where you will operate in daily peace, calmness, right, steadiness, also joy, which is so crucial to this season. Um. I have found that many women who struggle with you, you're not only impatient though. There's a bunch of other negative feelings that come along with being impatient. So you're impatient. You're also in fear. You might be in anxiety. You might be worried that it ain't going to happen. You're probably racking your brain trying to figure out, should I be doing more? Do I need to be doing something else to find a man? Not meaning do you, should you be doing more concerning the things of God, which really is the key there. 
But you're really thinking, should I be doing more to put myself out there? Should I stay with the last person? Did I let him go or walk away too quickly? Maybe I was being too picky. Maybe I need to lose a few more pounds. Maybe I need to get out the house more. Maybe I do need to download that app. Because after all, such and such and so and so, they met that man on the app. And I've been waiting all this time. Maybe I should just go download and swipe left and swipe right and send up a prayer. And God will send them to find me on that relationship app. So when you are struggling with impatience, there's a lot of other negative loneliness that comes with that as well. Um, What else? What else? You tell me. What else? You tell me. Now, just in case you're new to me, I'm glad that you are here. But um, I'm not, I am, uh, I would say over here on this page, I like to have two-way communication. I like to have a dialogue with you all because I actually do, um, I don't, I'm, I'm not in pride. I don't need to just look at myself right now talking because I already know all of this. And I don't struggle with impatience. So I'm really here to help you, which means that you need to talk to me. Okay, um, I'm at this age and I should have, yeah, dealing with frustration, frustration, frustration with the fact that he's not there yet. I will say this. The only time I get frustrated is when there's a bug in the house or when I'm taking out the trash or the car needs to get worked on. I'll be quite honest. I'll be like, Lord, where is he? There is the big old water bug, and I don't feel like killing it, but I'm the only grown-up, and if I don't deal with this water bug, William is running away scared because he doesn't have a man. Y'all, I dropped him off at school. This is a sidebar, and there was a big old bug on the yard rail when I was dropping him off, and I was like, oh, my God, there's a bug. Oh, back up, William, get away, and there was a dad that came up and dropped off his kids right behind us. He reached over. Picked the bug up, let the bug crawl on his hand, and then did like that. And I said, oh, he's touching the bug. <laughs> it was a man. And I said, Jesus, where is he? Because you know what? William wouldn't be scared of bugs. But because his mama sees a bug, and I'm like, oh, my God. If there was a man <laughs> who was not afraid of bugs, right? They just, if, if there's a bug that needs to die, Men don't even smash it. You know what a man does? He takes a paper towel and he scoops it up and he squishes it in his hand and he throws it in the trash can. And I think that is so disgusting. But I have noticed that's how men kill bugs. We throw stuff at the bugs. We spray the bugs to kill them. And then if we have to be bold and we have to smash them, it is so disgusting because then you got to clean it up. It's bug juice on the bottom of your shoe and all over the floor. And you're like, ugh. And I was thinking to myself as I drove away after this man just picked up the bug and threw it. I said, William needs to learn how to not be scared of bugs because he's a boy growing into a man. And he don't need to be like me, scared of bugs. He needs to... <laughs> anyway. So, <clears throat> when it comes to <laughs> overcoming impatience, right, and not being impatient, you have to fill your days, your mind, your heart, your spirit, your soul with faith-filled behaviors so stuff that's going to help to build your faith of course what is that the word of god um the spirit of god the presence of god the words of god other encouraging people like myself you know go stroll through my igtv watch a bunch of those encouraging videos that i give you about being in faith for your husband um but then but then there are other things right that you can fill your time fill your calendar with fill your days with so that you're not only thinking about that. Do y'all know of everything that's on my mind? I have a lot on my mind today. It dating, getting, wanting, needing, other than that brief moment when I dropped William off at school. A man is the last thing that is on my mind. I'm not sitting here thinking about every day where is he and why he ain't came yet. Now, I will say this, right? Because I'm a woman, just like all of you. When I see a woman with like she just had a baby or something like I'm watching a, a program and the girl just had a baby 
and you know her and her husband were talking about having another child of course stuff like that is going to stir your little emotions right but it doesn't linger is what i'm saying i don't i don't wake up and go to sleep thinking about the fact that i am not married and i am not married so for those of you who are new and you're wondering are you married no i'm not not yet but i will be so take it from somebody who understands exactly where you may be maybe i have been attacked in my mind the same way a lot of you have by satan because as you are an unmarried woman of god your day should be devoted to the lord and there is a special place on the inside of your spirit that is reserved for god you know we were created to have a real relationship with our heavenly father Adam and Eve walked and talked with God. The Bible says that Adam was in the garden and he heard the Lord coming. Some of you don't even know when God is and when he's not talking to you. You don't know if he gave you a dream or not. You don't know if he's speaking to you about a man or not. You don't know the Lord's voice. Adam, God wasn't even talking. Adam heard the Lord coming. How intimately do you need to be acquainted? And you know, sometimes you can read that story and think, well, that was them back then. They were human beings just like you and me. And God is a spirit, always has been. So, you are a human being. God is a spirit. Nothing has changed as far as the fact that we're humans and God is a spirit. And Adam heard the presence of God approaching and got nervous because he had did something he wasn't supposed to do. Now, we should be so intimately acquainted with our Heavenly Father. There is a special place that He has reserved for Himself in creating each and every one of us. And if you do not even have, your, if your relationship with God is so weak that you do not even know when He is and when He is not talking to you, you don't have the discernment enough to tell between the voice of God, the Holy Ghost that is talking to you, which, by the way, lives on the inside of your spirit. Let's not forget you are a temple of the Holy Spirit. He's on the inside of you. And you can't even discern his voice. You don't even know when the devil. Do y'all know when the fiery darts are thrown? It doesn't sound like a fiery dart. It sounds like something sweet and innocent. It sounds like it could be God. It's supposed to. He's a deceiver. He's a counterfeit. It sounds like it could be your own thoughts. Put yourself out there more. Get online. He don't have to be saved. He could be a Muslim. It's okay. That is the devil. Go ahead and have sex. It's okay. It ain't that serious. You gonna get married anyway? How many fell for that lie? Go ahead and do it, girl. You're gonna marry him anyway. It doesn't matter if you do it now or after you get married. You're gonna get married anyway. And did you marry him? No. That was the devil lying to you, telling you to operate outside of the word of God and the will of God. Now, with that being said, that is why on this list of things, whenever I say what you want to do when you're dealing with impatience is to focus on God. I don't like to just leave it there because a lot of you already know that you're supposed to focus on God, right? You already know that. How many of you heard that already before? You heard people say that a million times, focus on God. Okay, cool. I am. Now what? I'm still feeling impatient, Sarita. And that is why I like to give practical things that you can actually do. But on the bottom of this list, which should have been on the top, was doing a deep study into understanding the fullness of who Christ Jesus is. The fullness, the full understanding of who the Holy Spirit actually is. And a full understanding of who your Abba Father is. Because to claim... You know, here's what people say when they don't really have a good relationship with God. They say, I have a relationship with God. It's my personal relationship, though, Sarita. So, my relationship doesn't look like yours does, but I have my own. It's my personal. And what I have found is every single time somebody said that, it's because they don't really have a relationship with God at all. They just go and pray here and there. They go to church here and there, but they don't know when God is talking to them. They don't understand what the Bible, they don't know how to divide the word of truth. Do you know that there's a way to read the Bible and misinterpret and twist those scriptures to make them say something they don't actually even say? 
because you don't know how to even read and understand the Bible correctly on your own because you haven't taken the time. You have to take time and sit down and do a little bit of research, a little bit of study. Now, everybody's not going to go like me and get a master's in divinity with a concentration in Greek and Hebrew language so you can understand the original text. Everybody's not going to be that deep, right? But it don't take a whole lot of energy. You can even watch a YouTube video about a book in the Bible so you can really understand the background, the historical context. You can take some scripture and you can read it in different translations so that you really can have a full understanding of what the Bible says. You could just get you a good study Bible and read that paragraph before it goes into chapter one so you can understand a little bit about the book itself or the people that authored the books in the Bible. Right? Right? You should at least know how to go and study the Bible on your own and get your own personal revelation so you can build up your own spirit and build up your own faith when you are struggling with a weak moment. Do you know that when you spend time with God, he will minister to you? We minister to God when we worship, when we say, Father, I bless you, I honor you, I exalt you, I praise you. That is us ministering to God, right? Father, I love you. You are so good to me, and I thank you for this life that I live. But then when you get quiet and you listen and you start to sense his presence, and you're overwhelmed with the presence of God, and you are on your face in worship, and tears are falling down your face, God is ministering to you. And when you have those encounters with God in true worship, when you leave the presence of God, you are built up in the spirit. You are stronger. You are. When is the last time you've had that personal moment with the Father? You. I'm asking each and every one of you looking at me right now. When is the last time you've had that experience with God? Was it last week, last month, last year? Have you never had an intimate moment. I'm not talking about when you're in church and you start crying. I'm talking about when you are at home in your prayer closet, wherever your prayer closet may be. My prayer closet is in the middle of my living room because it's a big rug and my rug is thick and plush. And when I get on my knees, my knees don't hurt. When is the last time? You poured yourself out in worship before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And you ministered to him and you allowed him to minister to you. Now, if you're struggling with impatience and all of these negative feelings, I can promise you that it's going to help you. I can promise you it will. It works. Try it. You try it. Put on some good praise and worship music. Pray in tongues. Worship God. Sing praises to him. Thank him, bless him, exalt him, lift holy hands to him, worship him, and then get quiet, get on your knees in worship and listen. Now you might not hear nothing in the first one, two, three, four or five minutes, but I can promise you if you stay in that posture, you will begin to sense the presence of God and you will be able to hear him talk to you. Try it. It works. This is a thousand times better than downloading Bumble. It's a thousand times better than going and listen to some old carnal, so-called relationship expert, guru, whatever, ain't got the Holy Ghost nowhere near them. And you listening to everything that they saying that is really speaking. You know, the Bible says that in the last days, people will have itchy ears. It she is. And you listen to any old body online that called himself a relationship, whatever. Because they call themselves a self-love advocate. <laughs> and they really just massaging the emotions of women so they can get all your money. Um, but spending time with the father and getting to know him will help you a thousand times more than they will. I, can pr I promise you. I promise you. I'm not here to deceive you. There's no deception in me telling you to go to the Father. Now, that's first and foremost. 
But there are some other things that you can do to help you to overcome impatience. But I really want all of us to be women of God that increase our personal, personal encounters with the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, your Abba Father. Personally, instead of saying, I have my own relationship and you don't have none. You really don't have none. Because if I say, what's the last thing you heard from God in prayer? Um, Sarita, how do I know what God is talking to me? Okay. Well, that lets me know right there. Because when you have a relationship with somebody, you talk to them. How can you say that you have a friend, a best friend, if y'all don't communicate ever? If the only time y'all communicate, you just call her, talk, and hang up. What kind of friendship is that? How would you feel if your best friend called you right now, talked your ear off for 30 minutes, and then hung up the phone? You couldn't even get a word in edgewise. You wouldn't consider her a friend. You might she don't even listen to me. Do a deeper study into understanding who, and then let's talk about Jesus Christ real quick. Um, I feel, I also believe that there is a lack of people having a full understanding of who Jesus Christ actually is. We understand that he is our Lord and Savior, right? That he died on the cross for our sins. We know that. But let's go beyond who else is Jesus? What else, what else was significant about everything that took place while he walked this earth? While he was on the cross and then after he resurrected. Let's really dissect and understand the significance of what he have done. Because contrary to what these false uh, uh, religions and doctrines want to say, he was more than just a prophet. He came, he worked miracles, signs, wonders. But what else did he do? What example did he leave for you and I to follow? What instructions did Jesus Christ give? What are those red letters in the Bible? What do they really even mean? Do you know who Jesus is? What? Do you know? Because if you did, there would be a lot more of you praying for people to get healed from COVID and casting out uh, 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 these, these diseases and these sicknesses, a lot of you will understand that it is in the name of Jesus Christ that every knee must bow. You won't be afraid of all these demonic spirits that are in this earth where I'm running rapid through Christianity. Why is the devil allowed in your home? Why is the devil allowed in any of your family members' homes? Since you all claim that you're Christians. You don't even know who Jesus is. What is A deeper study and understanding needs to be made so that we could be uh, bold Christians who are strong in our in our God-given authority. And we can truly rule and reign in this earth the way that we're supposed to. I don't want to see one more post of a Christian person whose life was taken prematurely when it could have been prevented. Yes, it could have been prevented. Yes. Yes, it could. Yes, it could. There are a lot of promises. There's a lot of decrees, declares. There's the wisdom of God. Again, when you hear from God, he will tell you, don't turn left, go right. Because if you go left, there's an accident. If you go left, there's something bad going to happen. Just go right so you can be safe. You can't even discern. The God can't even lead you like he needs to. Out of harm's danger. Don't go in there. You're going to get sick. Oh, you might want to stay in the times right at this time so you can cure that germ. The devil is trying to attack you right now, but I don't want the virus to get you. So right in this moment, you better hit the sanitizer. Go wash your hands real quick. The, I mean, the Lord can't even lead you. Who is Jesus Christ to you? He is Lord and Savior. Thank God he's Lord and Savior. But what does that even mean? Lord and Savior. Is he really the Lord of your life or are you the Lord of your life? You do whatever you want and then you're like, I'm struggling with impatience. Where is he? Well, excuse me. What is the last thing that you heard from God in prayer? Is he really your Lord? Are you submitted to him? Are you obeying him? When I pray for my baby boy right now, one of the first things that I pray is that he is sensitive to the spirit of God and he, he walks and operates with a strong spirit of submission and obedience so that when the Holy Ghost talks to him, he listens. And I pray that for his four. He's going to be five next month. I pray that for him all the time. You will be an obedient child of God. You 
you're not going to be one of these grown Christians out here that rebel against God and then get mad at God when the devil does whatever he wants in your life. You're not going to be one of these grown Christians out here who rebel against God and wonder why things ain't working. Things are not working because you are rebellious. A little bit of submission and obedience will go a long way. And so with that being said, you know, we need to be women of God who understand who Jesus is as Lord, master, ruler, and controller. That is the definition of Lord. If I was to ask you right now, who is the master, the ruler, and the controller of your daily choices and decisions? What would you say? Would you say that Jesus Christ is running this ship? Jesus Christ is the master, ruler, and controller of my day-to-day choices. Everything that I'm doing right now is because of Jesus. He is master, ruler, and controller of me. I don't don't just download apps and go out with dates because I feel like it. I don't download apps and go on dates because everybody says I should be married by now. Or because I feel like I should be married by now when I'm not. (laughs) Because people are telling me I need to do more. Oh, that sounds great, Sarita, but I've been single for six months and I'm lonely. Okay, well, what is your Lord, your master, your ruler, controller? What is he saying to you about the season it is that you're in? Do you know that God doesn't want to leave us in the dark? If he did, there would be no Bible. He would have left us in the dark. God wants to direct us, instruct us. He wants to be our master, ruler, and controller, which is who Jesus Christ is, should be. As well as your Savior. Understand who he is. Understand who Abba Father is. Understand how much God actually loves you. When you understand how much God actually loves you, you will not settle for or tolerate nonsense. I do not care. Somebody put a question in the story yesterday and they said, what do I do when my parents say, um, my parents say I'm being too picky or I should be married by now? I'm like, who gives a care is what I wanted to say. It doesn't matter what anybody says, parent or no parent. What does God say? What does your Abba Father say? What does the Bible say? What does your prayer journal say? What has the Lord been speaking to you? I don't care what nobody else says. Your opinion is irrelevant. Everybody has an opinion. I don't live my life or make choices based on anybody else's opinion. Your opinion, is your opinion going to be there for me when I break my celibacy wall and then I end up pregnant and I'm a single mom and I'm out here struggling? What, What good is your opinion? Is your opinion going to be there when um, I end up backsliding in an abusive relationship? What happens then with all your opinions? What's your opinion at that point? Who cares about your opinion? What happens when you end up spreading your legs for somebody filled with the devil and get a incurable STD? Now what happens to all those opinions that you have allowed to rule and control your life? Keep going and getting their opinion with everything else. Then let them run it all. It doesn't matter what your parents' opinion is, your friends' opinion, societal. Listen, it don't matter Sarita's opinion. Sarita's opinion is irrelevant. It matters what God is saying to you. <clears throat> you also want to learn more about and step fully into your life purpose, which is huge. It's huge because there are more people who don't know what their purpose is um, that are Christians, right, with so-called relationships with God who actually don't know what their life purpose is. You don't know what your spiritual gifts are, but you allegedly have a relationship with God. What kind of relationship do you have with your creator, the author of everything that you are? And he's not going to tell you why he created you and what he created you to do. But you claim you got a relationship with him. It's better to be humble and honest with yourself and with where you are so that you can do better. Than to lie to yourself and think that you're further along than you actually are. It's way too many so-called mature prophetess. Who don't even know when they have a dream if God is telling me this man is my husband or not. I thought she was a prophetess. How how you going to claim you got a word of the Lord for anybody else. 
but you ain't got enough discernment, wisdom, and understanding to know when God, if, if, if it was God that gave you that dream in the first place, but yet you want to prophesy to somebody, keep, keep your alleged prophetic, learn how to discern personal prophetic messages that come from heaven. If they're coming from heaven, you see? Whenever I put my questions secret up and I say, do you have any questions? I always get a whole bunch of women who say, um, as a matter of fact, there's a woman who put something in there and she said, um, can I still see it? Oh man, I can't see it no more. She said, God keeps giving me a name. What'd she say? She said, God keeps giving me a name about my daughter. What is he trying to say? I'm like, if, if, if that's God that's speaking to you then you should go to him because Sarita don't know. Number one, I don't really know if it's God talking to you or not. Um, number two, I don't know anything about you. So I don't know if it's God, but it could be. If it is God, go to the same God that's giving you this name and then ask him, what does it mean? And what is he saying? Because he'll keep speaking to you. You know what I mean? If God is the one who's initiating a conversation, then when you go back to him and say, God, break it down for me, he's going to continue to speak to you, right? He's going to continue the conversation if it really is God. If it really is God, God is not hiding things, y'all. When you study the Bible and you see all the people who interpreted dreams, they interpreted dreams on the spot. It, it won't know. Oh, let me go pray and fast for 40 days, 40 nights. Go read. I want you to read Joseph. When he interpreted dreams, it was on the spot. Um, Daniel, when he interpreted dreams, Daniel knew he had to interpret a dream and he prayed in advance so that when he was in that moment, he would be able to tell King Nebuchadnezzar what his dream was and what it actually meant. But he didn't have to go away for 40 days and 40 nights and roll around with a message. You know, Nebuchadnezzar didn't know what it meant because Nebuchadnezzar didn't know God. Surely people should be coming to you, Christian woman, to ask you to tell them what their dream means instead of you going to another woman and saying, tell me what this means. Well, go and ask the God who you claim gave you the dream. This is not difficult, right? It's not hard. It's not difficult, y'all, I promise. I teach women how to hear from God, right? I have a whole, um, I have a whole digital ultimate guide called How to Hear from God. I talk to you about the different ways God can and will speak. I give you 14 things that can block and prevent you from hearing from God. And then I give you a prayer challenge where you spend 21 days removing all of those things in your soul and your spirit that could be preventing you from hearing from God clearly, right? Because there's things that can clutter up that frequency. But what I want to assure you of on today, now I want you to get the guide, right? Go to the link in my bio, look for the black book that says how God speaks. But even if you don't get it, I want you to be encouraged that it is not hard to hear from God. It is not. It is not hard to be able to tell when God is and when he is not talking to you. It is not. God did not create this experience to be challenging. Right? He didn't say, oh, I want my children to have a relationship with me. But I'm going to get them all kind of hoops, obstacles. The wall of China is going to be between me and them. God did not set it up that way. It's easy. It's not hard. It's not hard. I think it's good to get some good teachers because I am a teacher. So the reason I have books to help you is because I am here to teach. So God has given us teachers, right? And why did God say he gave gifts to the church? To edify the church. So that's what I'm here to do. Help you, the church, to do better. But it is not hard. You get the help. You follow the steps. And you, you get to the end goal. It's not hard. It's not complicated. And you can do this. Now, let me get back to the topic at hand, being impatient. Um, when you are really operating in your purpose, right, it will fulfill you. So when you're doing things that are related to your purpose, your gifts, your calling, it is fulfilling. It fills you from the inside. So how does this help with impatience? At no point am I sitting around like, oh, where is he? I can't take it no more. Yeah, I'm so busy with my purpose. I'm so busy operating in my calling and doing the things and building the things, creating and launching the things that God is wanting me to do. I don't have time to sit around with these negative emotions. Now, I'm human just like you. So are there thoughts that come in? Sure. Are, are those thoughts able to come in 
and be planted and produce a harvest of loneliness, desperation, and impatience? Never. No. As quick as they come in, they got to go out. I ain't got time for that. No, devil. I'm not falling for this today. I fell for that before. I fell for every trick under the sun, which is why I am an unmarried mother today. Because I fell for all that before. Being impatient, thinking I was being too picky, thinking I was asking for too much, thinking it would be okay to have a little premarital sex. It's going to be all right. Not knowing that my life will be flipped and turned upside down because of one season of poor choices. Um, so really focus on getting clear about what your purpose is. There should be a way more of us walking around who know what our purpose is than there are of women who say, I don't know what my purpose is. I don't know how to get started. What do I do? Okay, let's start first things first. Where, what does your Bible say the time and your prayer time look like? Let's just start there. You spend time with God, do you read your Bible? Let's just start there. Okay. Um, a couple things I put on this list. Take risk. Chase dreams and reach passion driven goals now i added that one in i'm gonna be honest it's because i'm getting older okay these gray hairs let me tell you about the, let me tell you about gray hairs some of y'all know that got gray hair you can feel your gray hair growing out of your <laughs> it feels like there's a bug you like it's not a bug inside of my scalp right i don't live in the jungle somewhere why do i and i asked my mom i said mom do you feel your gray hair she said yeah girl you feel them gray hairs I feel gray hairs growing in places where I can't see the gray hairs, right? I feel them. They're there. I got my hair dyed. Not dyed. I got semi, um, semi color put on there about three weeks ago. It, it didn't help. You can still see the gray hairs. The hairs on my face. We all got hairs on our face. Some of these hairs are starting to grow out gray and clear. Like this see-through. I'm getting older, right? I'm not old, but I'm getting older when the hairs on your chin are see through and what i have learned is that taking risk chasing your dreams and going after passion driven goals will help you it will it will it's, it's like it adds a level of meaning to your life it it's like you're getting clear about your purpose but when you get clear about your purpose god is going to tell you to do things that are scary Sometimes you're going to be led to do things because you think it's God and it's not. This is all a part of the human experience though, right? Sometimes God will say, like, I'll give you an example. Like if God says to me, Sarita, you are a teacher, right? And there's many things I can do with that calling and that anointing. And I'm like, okay, guys, so what do you want me to do? And then God says, write a book. And then I'm like, okay, cool. And God says, you're supposed to write. So you, you're supposed to teach through writing. I'm like, okay, cool. So I'm writing books, writing books, writing books. And I'll tell you right now, I want to write, I want to write a fic, a Christian fiction book. I want to write a book with characters and that go on a journey. And I want it to be like an epic Christian novel. I want to do that really bad, right? Now, let's say I want to do that really bad. It's a good idea. I really want to do it. I know I'm anointed to write. I'm going to teach some lessons throughout the story. It's not going to be boring, that's for sure. Because I really think I want it to be about the days when I worked as a stripper in the strip club. And I, I think I want to follow the journey of somebody who goes into that, but then they can feel, and you know, it's like you, you're saved, but you're in darkness. So I want to tell her story, which obviously that's not going to be boring, right? A woman who is born again, but you dancing at the strip club. How does that work? And um, so that's not a boring story because you will hear everything, everything that goes on in the dressing room, everything that goes on after hours at the club. Stuff that goes on between the dances. Stuff that goes on when you're doing stuff on the side, like private parties. So I would go into that whole life. But then at the same time, I would be writing it as a Christian woman who doesn't cuss. So, I, you know what I mean? I don't fornicate. I live holy. So I'm going to be telling that story, but it, it, you're not going to get the cuss words, right? It's going to be graphic, but not too graphic. Because I don't want people to backslide while you're reading my book. <laughs> anyway, so here's the point. Let's say I have that idea, right? Because I'm an author and I already know I'm, I'm anointed to write. And let's just say I start developing this amazing novel and I spend, you know, all of this time doing it. And then let's say the novel flops because God is like, 
I don't want you to write that book. I know you have an amazing idea, but this is actually not a God idea. This is a good idea. It's not a God idea. And I spent all that time, all that effort, all that energy writing that book when I should have been writing some more books about godly dating, which is actually the book I'm working on right now. And God is like, I wanted you to go deeper and help these women with being in faith for a husband, uh, staying celibate. Um, what does the Bible mean when it says unequally yoked? You know, people hear words like unequally yoked, holiness, fornication, and they feel like that is too much. Some people, when you hear those words, you it's not that you don't want to submit, but you're like unequally yoked. I don't even really know what that means. Fornication, well, it feels good, so everybody else is doing it, why not? Or holiness, what is holiness? Holiness don't even sound like me. And, you know, so for me to be able to take those things and break it down to make you understand what God is saying, okay, how you can still be a beautiful woman and be holy. You can still have a bold personality and be holy. You can be in faith for an amazing man and don't be unequally yoked. You can really understand the fullness of what that even means, right? You can uh, understand why you should keep your legs closed, why you should be having sex when you're not married. But how beautiful and peaceful, y'all, I think, how amazing it is, okay, when you are celibate and you don't have to deal with having rose-colored lenses because this man is trifling, but because he is blowing your mind in the bedroom. You make excuses for all of his behavior that you know you don't want in a husband, but you're sticking around, you're praying, you're hoping. You don't have to go through none of that when you don't even have sex with him. When you could be in a relationship with somebody, getting to know them for a period of time, I'm, when I say a period of time, I'm talking about more than three months. And you can be with somebody, not have sex with them. That way you can truly, like, I don't want to use the word evaluate. But you can truly, I'll just say, get to know if somebody is heaven sent or if it's just not the one for you. Because sometimes people come and they could be from Satan. Or then sometimes they can come and they could just not be the one for you. Because I I believe I've had that experience. Not that it was an attack. But I believe that. I believe it was a test. I don't think it was an attack. But it was just not the one. Right? But because I did not have sex with him. When it got to the point of, okay, you're clearly not the one. I could easily walk away and be like, we just don't need to go no further. Because you're obviously not the one. And there's no harm, no foul. My heart is not broken. I ain't shed nair tear. He was cool. I liked him. But I did not cry. It was easy to walk away. You see, all of these things, it, you can peacefully date. Right? You can be in a, a relationship with peace when you're not having sex with somebody. But to be able to explain to a woman, okay, what do you do about being horny all the time? What does the Bible say about masturbating? You know, God want me to write that book. So I'm getting back to my example. God wants me to write that book and not this great epic Christian fiction novel that I really want to write. Here's my whole point. When you take risk and you chase dreams, you will step out on faith and try some things that you believe is God. And there's nothing wrong with that. Because some of those risks and dreams that you're taking are going to be beautiful. They're going to end up exactly where you're supposed to be in your promised land. Some of the risk and the dreams that you chase and the passion-driven goals that you reach, you're going to fall flat on your face. This is a part of the human experience. I'm learning this the older that I get. The older that I get and the more risks that I take, the more dreams that I chase. I don't regret any of it. I've had some horrible seasons and some very bad experiences. And then I've had some very, very high highs, some blessed experiences, some stuff that I wish I could rewind the clock. But... All of this is helping me to not sit around every day and feel sorry for myself because I'm not married yet. Where is the impatience when life is ever, it's like life is flowing and going and I'm on this roller coaster of life. And I am enjoying my life and getting the most out of it as an unmarried person. Which means I'm free, by the way. Because a lot of times you forget that you have so much freedom when you're unmarried. You can make a lot of choices and decisions on your own. You can pretty much do whatever you want because you don't have to make those choices with somebody else. One of my best friends is married. She lives in Georgia. She does not like living in Georgia. She doesn't like Georgia at all. She's only here. Why? Because of her husband's job. Can she go and live wherever else she wants? No, she's married. (laughs) 
now her husband is like, I love it here. I want to stay here. And now they're like trying to figure it out because she's like, I don't want to be here. I hate it here. <laughs> and I was like, well, if you can go and live in any other part, I, I was like, can he move to a different part of Georgia? She was like, no, I don't want to be here. Serena. <laughs> now, what is Serena doing? I am about to move. Yep. I am about to relocate, y'all. I am going to be in the DMV area. That's why you ain't seen me. I've been busy. I'm about to be in the DMV area. I'm moving on May 10th. With that being said, I just moved to Atlanta. When did I move in Atlanta? Some of y'all know. The end of 2019. Now I'm about to move to D.C. Do you know why? Because I can do that. I am an unmarried woman. I was wondering why my friend was so excited for me. I was like, she is so excited. That I'm about, like, she's more excited than I am. She's like, are you excited? Yeah, you're about to move. That's why. Because she wishes she had the freedom. <laughs> she don't have that freedom no more. She got to, her and her husband, they got to come to a, you know, they got to make a joint decision. And if one person, and how many of you know women? I know multiple women. My other best friend lives in Ohio. And she's been living in Ohio since we were like in our 20s. I think she moved up there when she was 20, if I'm not mistaken. So she's been there all this time with her husband, right? We talk about almost 20 years. And I had asked her repeatedly about moving, you know what I mean? Moving around and going somewhere else. She was like, I can't because my husband, my husband's job is here. And I was like, well, can't he just go to another office in the company in another state and then you guys can move? And she was like, no, there is no other office. This is it. <laughs> They're there for life. My mom. My mom loved the city. My mom was from Baltimore, Maryland. She loved it. She married my stepdad, who did not like the city. He was from Philly. He hated the city. He had bad experiences. He wanted to live in the suburbs. That's why, where does my mom live today? In Virginia. In the suburbs of, not Northern Virginia, Southeast Virginia. In the suburbs of Virginia. She don't live in the city. She loves the city. Like the, the the big city. The inner city. She's in the in suburbs in the country because of her husband. My grandmother did the same thing. I ain't going to take on that story. But my grandmother was the opposite. My grandmother loved the South. Right? She's from South Carolina. Loved the South. But when she married my granddad, he was from, I think he was from New York. And they ended up moving to Philly. And my grandmother and my granddad died in Philly. Both of them lived in Philly forever, even though she loved the South. Why? Because of her husband. Now, obviously, that's not always the way, the way it is. You know, sometimes there's a man who will compromise and go wherever the woman want to go. My entire point of telling you this is because as an unmarried woman, you are free. You are free to make choices with God as you're led by God. You are not... um having to make relationship having to make choices because of the person that you're with that's that's my whole point right you are free to chase dreams and to obey god as freely as you want to you are free to maneuver you have your entire bed to yourself <laughs> you have your entire home to yourself you don't have to worry about building a man cave in your home you can choose whatever home you want you can lay your rooms out however you want you are free right now Enjoy this season of freedom. You're supposed to be 100% devoted to God anyway in this season. Not devoted on the pursuit of getting a man. If you're devoted to a pursuit of getting a man, you're not managing this season properly. You're not. And you're going to end up heartbroken. And I don't want that to be the case with anybody. Now, here's the thing that I've also found after working with women. There are women who are like, well, I'm busy. I go to work. I spend time with God. Um, I'm celibate, Sarita. I'm not out here dating a bunch of men and it just gets hard. It gets lonely because he's not here yet. I'm still going to go back to this list. And I really want you to think about the last thing that God told you to do. And you stepped out in faith. Y'all stepping out in faith is exciting. Now it's scary because sometimes everything, everything don't work. I'm going to share my whole testimony probably sometime in 2022. But you step out in faith. Everything don't always work. Okay, but it is a lesson and it makes life fun. It makes life exciting. It makes this season fun. When I get married, 
I will be able to honestly say that I have enjoyed my single season devoted to the Lord because I have a relationship with God, which means it's not a dry situation. You understand when you have a relationship with God, you can hear from him and he's leading and guiding you. Your life is not dry. Your life is busy. It's busy with fruitful, blessed activities, stuff that will fill you up from the inside. You're not lonely when you have God with you and you're not lonely when your life is filled with purposeful work, passion driven goals. And you know, you're, just, you're, you're living your life. I can't keep saying that enough. But there's a way to live your life, right? With things that are going to, I, I, I keep wanting to say, like replenish. You're not filling your days with stuff that just drained you, right? Because you could be busy and you could be drained and tired. But you also can be busy and do fulfilling, rewarding activities, work. You know, going to the spa, going on a trip. Those things for me, they replenish me. They fill me up on the inside. I absolutely love it. I like planning trips and taking them. Planning is fun because you, you start to think about the future and the goals. and what you, you, like, you can see I'm a visionary. You can see what you want to do when you get there. And then when you actually go and you do it and you have all these memories. I love the experiences that I am making. I have more experiences in my brain than I actually have pictures at this point. But um, living your life, you, you don't have time to sit around and be impatient. Where is he? Where is he? What were you doing yesterday, last night? What were you doing this weekend? Because I could tell you what I was doing. And it wasn't sitting around being impatient. I actually was picking up furniture for this new place that I'm going to. I'm so excited to be able to have a basement. I'm so looking forward to that, which is crazy. But because you have like extra, you have all this extra space. And the basement has a room in it. And there's a bathroom down there. So it's like a whole extra floor in the house that you're not paying for. With an extra room, with an extra bathroom, and it opens up to the back. Y'all, I'm just excited. Another way you could work on overcoming impatience, and I'm gonna go, I gotta wrap this up. Um, read a lot, grow your knowledge spiritually and professionally. Read a lot. Read. If you don't like reading, get an audio book. But I would recommend reading a lot, reading your Bible. Reading other books that are also going to feed your spirit and your mind. Grow your knowledge spiritually and professionally. Now, I have been an avid reader. And before I came to Christ, I was reading every ungodly carnal novel. But reading was fun because it would take my mind away. It would take my mind on a journey. Just like watching movies. It takes your mind away. It takes your mind on a journey. And what does it take your mind off of? How you wish he was here and how he's not here yet. Well, when is the last time you read a book? When is I'm going to say this again. When is the last time you did a deeper study into the Bible? <clears throat> pick, pick whatever your favorite book of the Bible. Your favorite person in the Bible. Your favorite story in the Bible. Really just enjoy the word of God. You know, you can enjoy it. It doesn't have to be boring or dry. You can make it fun because you get to choose. You always be interested in a Bible character or you always hear people talk about this particular character. Go and do a deep study into that person and into the background and into the history. You make it enjoyable. If there is an area that is spiritual, I've had people contact me about the numbers. How, do you know about the numbers in the Bible? What do you mean? No. But if that tickles your fancy, go and study it out. If you are prophetic and you want to learn more about dream interpretation, study the Bible about dreams. If you are into deliverance and spirits and things like that, study the Bible about spirits and deliverance. Study whatever interests you is what I'm saying. And you can make your Bible study interesting. It don't have to be boring and dry. Study whatever excites you. That could be the thing that God wants you to teach other people. I study the Bible about love and dating so I can help y'all. But it's also very interesting to me. And of course, it helps to build my faith because even when I'm not studying for that, I like I like I usually a couple times a year I do a deep study into the book of Proverbs because Proverbs is the book of wisdom, and I want to grow in my wisdom. This is again the older I get, the more wisdom I want. Before I jump out and make all these choices, oh my God, give me wisdom! So I'm always studying the book of Proverbs, and there is 
so much love and dating and relationship and having baby promise scriptures. I started to highlight them the last time I went through it. Because I was like, Lord, your word says so much about love, dating, and having children in here that it's ridiculous for people to run around and say, Well, Sarita, what do I do if he's not attracted if I'm not attracted to him? Go read the Bible. I want to say go read the Bible, but I understand that everybody doesn't read the Bible and know how to take what they're reading and apply it to real life. But that's why it's important that you just get in there and start digging into the scriptures so that you can get to a point where you can read something, you can understand what God is saying to you today. Does that make sense? Is this helpful? Because I'm not done. I'm almost done, but I want to see is this helpful for y'all that are looking at me right now. Is this helpful as far as um, helping you to deal with impatience while you're waiting for your husband to find you? Let me know if this is helpful and let me know how it's helpful. Um, and I'm going to get to the question. I'm going to see one question and a question sticker. I'm going to get to the question on there before I end, I promise. Because I know I told y'all to put your questions on there. Oh, thank you. Okay, I see some yeses. Perfect. So, I would recommend finding a book and reading it. Maybe I'll start sharing. See, I like to listen to audio books because I'm so busy um, that I don't really have time to sit and read a book. Because between me working, taking care of my child, when I do have downtime, which is in the evening, I'm usually writing a book or I'm doing, I'm working on something else. So I don't really have time to read a book. So I listen to a lot of audio books. But I think I'm going to start sharing some books, like some regular, I share my books all the time. I share my books for y'all to get, but I think I might start sharing just some other books that I read that I have found that are helpful. Um... Because I think that might be helpful for y'all too. Thank you so much. Is it possible that you may have a question? Okay, so. Um, read to grow your knowledge. And then I say it spiritually and professionally. Because I'm called to professional women, right? You are career women. How can you take your career to the next level? How? I think that. Okay, so there's two. So some of you are entrepreneurs and you're professional women. Some of you just go to work. So you're just professional women. Think about number one. How can you take your business to the next level? What can you do to really grow in your business? You can read books to teach you about that. What can you do to take your career to the next level? Um, So you can start working on it. There's different paths that you can take in your career, right? Go ahead and research out all of those different paths. Excuse me. And then just see which one do you feel like God is leading you to follow or go into prayer and get clear about which path does God want you to follow. Once you start to lay those paths out, if you're unsure about which path, I would say follow the path of peace and purpose. So whichever path gives you the most peace and whichever path is going to help you to fulfill your godly purpose that is going to be the path that the anointing is going to be. In other words, okay, I don't want to sound so deep. That is going to be the path that is going to be very, very blessed. <laughs> okay. The anointing is going to be there, which means there's going to be favor, doors opening. There's going to be money. It's going to be easy. People are going to like you. You're going to like the people you're working with. Okay. It is going to be blessed because the anointing is going to be there. And, um, but see, these are things you can do. These are things that will help you not to be impatient. How can you take your career to the next level? 
maybe your education to the next level. I'll be quite honest. The reason that I went back to school last year and started working on my master's in divinity is because I have an MGI bill because I was in the military as well. And my MGI bill runs out in 2024 because I got out of the Navy in 2009. So my MGI bill runs out in 2024 and I can't pass it down, which sucks. Like I wish I could just pass, pass that money down to my, um, to my William, but I can't. So I was like, I earned my MGI bill money. Okay. I feel like I earned every bit of it for that eight years I did in the military and I want it. So I was like, well, what am I going to go back to school for? I don't want to go back to school. I don't even like school. But if I was to go back, what would I want to go back for? And of course, I am a Bible teacher, preacher, every, I am a church girl. I love the kingdom of God and the things of God. So I was like, well, shoot, if I'm going to go back to school, let me go on and get my master's. And then it was right around that time that I was really feeling led that I needed to start a Bible school uh, for women. So I want to, I still want to do that. I want to start a woman only Bible school. And I was like, well, let me go ahead and get my master's, right, in divinity. And maybe I'll get my a doctor in ministry. And in that way, when people are reading, like, my bio, it will say more than just Sarita was a life coach. Because, <laughs> you know, people are so deep and they judge you. So it's like, okay, I, if, if, if I'm open up a whole Bible school, I don't want it to just say, Sarita has been a life coach, right? I wanted to say something like M Dev behind my name or D. What does it say if you have a doctor? I think it says D dot M I N or something like that. So I would be um, respected in the ministerial educator community anyway. So again, while I'm working on my master's in divinity, with my concentration in, in, in Hebrew and Greek. Because I love reading and studying and, and like digging into the Bible. I love going into the writing of the word of God. And the interpretation. Of, I love the the whole thing. So. um, Do y'all understand what I'm saying? I'm giving y'all real life examples. And I'm speaking to you as a woman who never gets lonely. And does not grow impatient. If you can just listen to these words of wisdom that I give you on how I live my life. You can take some of these things away and at no point in my, I will say this. I had a thought in 2020, at the end of 2020, I was in the middle of a fast. Again, pay attention. I'm a fasting and praying woman who studies the Bible. I was in the middle of a fast and I was thinking, well, because I had went to the store, this is what happened. I went to the store and I saw a man and I was like, he's tall, right? I want a nice tall gentleman. And I was like, he's tall. But I can't tell if he's cute because he has on a face mask. He looking at me. I'm looking at him. But he also can't tell if I'm cute because I have on a face mask. So I was like, maybe because of the times that we're in. Because I was like, oh, he's not going to. I said, we got a social distance. He can't talk to me because, you know, we got a social distance. I don't really want him up in my face because we got a social distance. So it's kind of like it killed the whole vibe, I want to say, that I usually have. Because I don't usually have a problem, you know, when I see somebody. But I was like, this is killing the whole thing. And I got in my car and I said, well, you know what? Maybe because of the world that we're in and because of all these face masks and social distancing and dudes can't just come up to you and say, hey, beautiful, can I get your number? That kind of thing, you know what I mean? It really doesn't happen anymore because, again, face masks, social distancing. I said, so maybe it, would be, maybe it wouldn't be wrong or bad um, to get online because if I get online, at least you can see my whole face, right? At least I can see your whole face. Um, at, at least we can, you know what I mean? Chat a little bit. And I was fasting and I was praying. Cause I was like, I've been down this path before about getting online. And I got online in 2017 and it was horrible. So I was like, I've been down this road before. And what I'm not going to do is be deceived, right? Cause I'm having these thoughts, but again, they could be fiery thoughts. The devil, because I'm in the middle of my purpose. The devil could be trying to do what he did in 2017, get me distracted online, swiping right, swiping left, meeting the wrong people to cause me to be backslidden. He could be trying that again by planting these thoughts in my mind. Oh, face mask, it's okay, blah, 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 this ain't third. And I prayed about it, and I thought about it, and I prayed about it, and I was like, you know what? I'm not getting online nothing. I'm not downloading no app. I'm not doing it. I'm a woman of faith, and I'm going to be in faith, and that's just that. Either God is the great God, Jehovah, either he's almighty, he's sovereign, or he's limited. 
He's limited to our human experiences. And I have to get online because God is not more powerful. Like God can't connect me with a man without me downloading an app. And I decided that is not how my story is going to go. I'm a woman of faith and I will have a testimony. I'll have a testimony of endurance, of faith. The Bible says what faith and patience, some about faith and patience and uh, endurance and getting to the promised land. So I'm like, that will be my testimony. Okay. Faith, patience, and trust. Not, oh, because of the face mask, we have to blah, blah, blah. No, that is me being like, that is me saying, based on the conditions of humanity, this is what I have to do. And the word of God and faith and trusting in the word has nothing to do with a face mask. Has everything to do with being in faith, trusting in God, his timing. I was reading in Ecclesiastes last week, y'all, and I promise it was eye opening. And it was such a good reminder of how we don't have all the answers. The greatest bishop in the world who has been studying the Bible for 50 years does not have all the answers. I don't have all the answers. There are a lot of unknowns. Why do some people get married young and some people get married old? I don't know. Why do some people want to have kids and then some people, uh, they something happens with their organs and they're not able to have children? I don't know. Why are some people born into households of molestation? I don't know. Why are some people born into abusive families? I don't know. Why do some people have car accidents but they are Christians? Why are there Christians dying of COVID? I don't know. Why are you still single? I don't know. Why am I still single? I don't know. I don't know. And the thing that happened when King Solomon was trying to get all these answers and trying to figure everything out, he wrote the book of Ecclesiastes. And he also said, I don't know. I'm a human. I will never understand or comprehend the mind of God. There are some things. That we wonder about and we try to figure out and we think we know and we still don't know. I don't know. And Solomon said the best thing that we can do is do our work and enjoy our life. And I said, okay. So I am going to follow what I'm reading and I'm going to keep on doing my work and enjoying my life. And stop trying to figure everything out. You can't figure everything out. There is not a clear, uh, there's not an equation. You know how one plus one equals two? It doesn't work that way in the kingdom. Two people could do the exact same things in life and end up in different destinations because of the mind of God, because of the plan of God, because of whatever. There's also, there's also an unknown option that we won't know until we're face to face with Jesus and we can actually ask him. The best that we can do is do our work and enjoy our life. And I would say be in faith because that's the whole purpose of everything. You know, you got to believe you got to be in faith. William was talking to me in the car this morning. He said, we can't see God. We can't see him anywhere, but we know he's here. He said, I wish I could see God, mommy. I was like, yeah, me too, baby. He said, but and he gave me some little four-year-old reason. Cause he was, we was looking, I think we was looking at the sun was shining. And he said something about God is in the sun. I said, why are you saying God is in the sun? He said, because we can't see God, but we know that he's up high. He's up very, very high in the sun. I was like, okay. All right. God is in the sun. But we just, we can't see him. We can't see God. I wish we could see God, but we can't say we can't see him. No, we can't. But he believes. He already has faith. And. With that being said, this whole thing is set up around what we cannot see. Your faith for the husband you want and for the marriage you want is built around what you cannot see. This whole thing is set up around what we can't see. The minute that we decide to say, well, I need this to be set up in an organized fashion that makes sense to me where I can see it is the minute that you say, you know better than God how this thing should work and operate. That's called being prideful. None of us know better than God. And why couldn't you and I get married as soon as we turn 18? I don't know. But I do know that God loves you and he loves me. And God has our best interests at heart. 
So surely God is not going to let any of us wait if it is the worst option for us. This season of waiting is because it is the best option for us. Now, you have to have a mindset and an understanding of who God is. I know that God is love. And because I know that God is love and because I understand all the scriptures that talk about how good God is and how um, if you ask your parent for bread, they wouldn't give their child a steak or a stone. How much more is, is your father in heaven the, the the giver of gifts? I understand who God is. So surely I don't sit here and say, well, this sucks. God, why didn't you do it sooner? And why would I fuss at a loving father who knows what's best for me and what's best, by the way, for my child? Because for those of you who got children and you're like, I need a man in here. I need a man in the house. I get it. But if that man in the house ain't manifested yet, God still knows What's best for you and for your children? And by the way, God is your provider. So he will make a provision for your children and for you until that man come. God knows what's best. So with that being said, um, go head back and read this post because I didn't even get through everything, but I have to end this video. The last two points to help you to overcome um, impatience is to work on growing as a woman every single day. And to serve, love, and give to others every single day. And I think that we also don't do enough of that. I think that we, are, as a people, are just way too selfish, especially in this society. And we put what we want as the priority of, of all things. Every decision is about what we want. And when it comes to giving and serving and loving other people, you know, um, uh, if, you, if you give and if you serve and if you pour out love, it will be returned to you. And a lot of times you feel like, well, I just want a man. I need a man. I need a man. Well, how much are you actually being a good friend or a good sister in the Lord to the people that are around you right now that need you? You want somebody to love you and treat you amazing. How many people are you actually loving and treating amazing right now? You won't be impatient. I promise. I promise you. If you focus on how can I make somebody else day amazing today, all of these thoughts about where is he and where, how come he ain't here yet, you, 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 your head is not full of, when you're thinking about launching a nonprofit, serving in the ministry, packing up a box to go be a blessing to somebody, William is learning how to be a blessing to people right now. He already know we have a special spot in the house for donations. And then we also have another spot for my best friend because I told you my best friend got six kids and she has two little boys. So, because her little boys are younger than William now, I'm glad to actually have somebody to hand me down his stuff to because his stuff is like nice. His stuff is nice. His name brand. The kids grow so fast, his stuff is like new. He might have wore it and washed it one time, but then he can't fit it no more. So, I'm happy to have her to give stuff to and then to donate to other needy children. And we were packing up her box. I mean, this stuff in that box, like 10 boots. Um, cause for the first three years of his life, I was only buying him Jordans cause I like Jordans. So the Tim boost, the Jordans was going in there, all his hoodies and stuff. And he was like, does Angel not have clothes? Do her children not have clothes and shoes? And I was like, um, it's not that they don't have them, but we're going to be a blessing to them anyway, because she has six children. I said, she has a lot of children. So if we can be a blessing to her and help her and send her some stuff, that's what we're going to do. I'm sure they have. I said, William, they're not in the house naked. Okay. The, the kids got clothes. But it's so sweet that his little mind is because he was helping me pack the box. He helped me put stuff in the donation pile. I'm like, this pile is for donating to the needy. So the people who really don't have anything. And now they're going to have some shoes to put on their feet and some clothes on their back and some toys and stuff like that. So he already understands helping. When you when your mind is on packaging stuff, putting stuff together, sowing seed, adopting some orphan children overseas, um, starting your not you know, because there's things that you can do day to day, and then there's the bigger things that you can do to help people. You know, for those of you who, who already have a, a huge ministry idea, but what are the little things you can do today to help somebody, right? Who is in your life right now that you would just be a blessing to? And then you know, uh, how can you get involved with your local community and then think about the bigger long-term goals and how you can bless somebody? When, when my mind is thinking about how can I help the orphan children, like in my spirit right now, 
is that I want to do something to help orphans. I don't know what. But when I have time to sit down and research and get on the computer and figure out how can I help orphans in America? Because I was sponsoring children overseas, but something shifted. And I really feel like I want to help people closer to home. And instead of sending my money overseas, I really want to help people that are right here in America. And um, because I feel like it's unacceptable for us to be, you know, the most. What's the word I want to use for America? Because we're not the wealthiest. We are supposed to be like one of the most progressive countries. And I feel like if I'm about to send my money to feed children that are starving in other nations, but yet you're telling me there are starving homeless children around the corner from me, unacceptable. In the next state, also unacceptable. So I'm like, let me figure out how I can help the children right at home. Here's my whole point. I'm having those thoughts going through my mind. How can I help the orphans? How can I help the children? How can I find a local project for me to get involved in? Here are the thoughts that my that are going through my mind. Not where is he and why he not here yet and how she just got married and she said yes and I'm ready to say yes too. How, do y'all do y'all understand what I'm saying? These are the things that I think about. What am I studying? What am I teaching my child? What am I building, launching? What career move am I about to make? How am I going to my business to the next level? How can I better help and serve these women, you all, that are before me? What can I do to pour into their lives? How can I relocate? I'm chasing my dreams. I'm taking risks. I'm setting goals. These, this is what goes through my mind. There is no impatience. There is no loneliness. There is no fear. I told y'all what happened when I had that thought about going online. I was fasting and praying. I just took that season and said, let me just pray about it. Wait for the Lord to speak. Let me keep moving forward. It didn't consume me. I wasn't consumed with the thought. I didn't wake up every day and go to sleep every night thinking about it. I was busy. I was busy thinking about what, what program, what book I'm about to write. What your your mind did, the, the thoughts. What did, what did I hear in prayer? What did God tell me yesterday? What is he saying to me today? I'm in worship. You see? Your actions, your thoughts, your, your mind, your movement in this life is not all about what this person said online who was a stranger to me about getting a man and how I need to put myself out there. How I need to be more open to date. And you need to be more open. So you're trying to tell me that instead of going about things God's way, it's better that you get rid of your godly standards so you can be more open. Open to what exactly? You're going to be open to every attack and plan that Satan has for your life. You want to open your life up to that. You want to be more open to that. The Bible says narrow is the way. So instead of you taking the narrow way, keep your legs closed. Okay. Uh, don't be unequally yoked. Be in faith, patience, prayer, devoted to God. Let's not do things God's way. Let's be more open. Let's get rid of all of that. Narrow is get rid of that. Open up the wide gate. I want the floodgates of men and prospects. You ain't got to be saved. You ain't got to be a Christian. You ain't got to be a praying man. You ain't got to know God. You ain't got to study your Bible. I'm open. I am open. You ain't got to be living holy. I, I'm living holy. I'm celibate. But you could be spreading that penis wherever you want because I'm open. I am not open to you. I would highly recommend, you know, that um, that you keep yourself busy, woman of God, but busy with the right things. Busy with things that are going to fill you up, feed your spirit, and I promise it works. I promise it works. Go back and watch the replay of this video whenever you feel like you're struggling with impatience. Whenever you feel like you're having an impatient uh, moment. Or season, because here's what I'm not saying. I'm not saying that these negative thoughts don't come. Sometimes they do because you're human, but you don't allow them to control you or drive you or consume you. You deal with them. You shut them down. And you say, no, I'm a woman of God devoted to the things of God. Point, point, period. I'm going to continue to love God, live holy, be in faith, and I'm going to get busy with my life. Oh, gosh. There's a lot of questions I can't do. Let me see here. Um... All right, I gotta I gotta answer this one. She said, How do you minister to the Lord when you don't have tongues? Jordan, are you still here? Because if you're still here, I'm gonna oh, I gotta get ready to go. I'm gonna pray for you to receive your personal prayer language on today. 
but I need to know if you are still here and if anybody else is here looking at me right now that is not filled with the Holy Spirit and you don't pray in tongues. All right, because I will pray for you to pray in tongues today. How many of you don't pray in tongues? <clears throat> now, you can minister to the Lord when you don't pray in tongues just by praying in English, however. Okay, as a Pentecostal Christian, which you are, because you're here, post-Jesus. Um, You need to get filled with the Holy Spirit and you need to pray in tongues. Okay, I see you. Tina. Are you the only one, Tina? Okay, I'm going to pray this prayer because I really have, to, I have a meeting in too. Um... But I'm going to pray for you, Tina, and I'm going to pray for anybody else, Monica, who has not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and you don't pray in tongues. Now, I'm going to say this um, real quick, what it is. I want you to go when you get a chance and read Acts chapter 2 because the prayer I'm about to take you through is completely biblical. All right, the promise of praying in tongues comes by way of the gift of the Holy Spirit. And because the gift of the Holy Spirit is a free gift, all you have to do is ask for it and you receive it. Just like any gifts, any gift at all, you put your hand out and you receive it. Um, the Holy Spirit is a free gift and prayer in tongues is a manifestation, which means it is proof that you have received the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's what I mean. When you pray in tongues, you build up your most holy faith. Um, I see a couple of you more that said you know, you don't pray in tongues either. So I'm going to pray for all of you at once. But I want you to understand that when you pray in tongues, you build up your most holy faith. Oh, I got to say this too. When you pray in tongues, nothing takes control of your body and makes you pray. That would be weird and spooky. That would actually be a demon spirit. But when you are filled with the Holy Spirit and you can pray in tongues, you pray as you will. Meaning you open up your mouth and you pray. Shombo raka yo kombo te kisio. Nothing weird, nothing strange about that, but it is extremely powerful. It is a spiritual prayer language. Each and every one of us as born-again believers has the opportunity to pray in tongues. You just need to have faith. All right, so I'm going to lead you in this prayer. You're going to pray to receive your prayer language. And then I'm going to have a moment where you can allow the manifestations to come forth. Now, again, the way the manifestation comes forth is because you open up your mouth. And you allow the words to come out of your mouth. So, <laughs> I know it might sound a little strange, especially when you hear that for the first time. But you do have to participate. So, you got to open up your mouth, let your voice move, and then your prayer tones will, it'll come out like that. It is going to be easy. This is not hard. None of this is hard. So, go ahead and uh, repeat these words after me. If you have not prayed in tongues before, say, Heavenly Father, I believe in Jesus Christ. That he is my Lord and Savior. I believe in the gift of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of praying in tongues. And I ask on today that you would give me that gift. I ask for the Holy Spirit to consume my spirit. And I thank you. That I am baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire. I thank you for my personal prayer language called prayer tongues. I thank you that it is easy for me to pray in tongues. And that I pray in tongues as much as possible. From this day forward. I thank you for the gift of tongues. In Jesus' name, amen. Now you can go ahead and pray in tongues right now. Now you don't have to worry about how it sounds. It may or may not sound like mine. It should sound like your own. It doesn't matter if it's fast or slow. It doesn't matter if it's loud or soft. It should just be another language that is not English. And that is how you will know it is your prayer tongue. Now, 
Father, I thank you for filling these women with your spirit right now. And I thank you for the manifestation of their prayer language. Now, as soon as you pray in tongues, I want you to type into the comments and let me know. As soon as you pray in tongues, I want you to let me know in the comments that you have prayed in tongues for the first time. Father, I pray that you will take a hold of these women's lives and that your hand will always be upon them and they will be a woman who is sensitive to your spirit sensitive to your voice oh god that they can hear from you like never before because the power of god is on their lives and i thank you that when they pray from this day forward the power of god is released the exousia power the dunamis power the miracle working power of god i thank you that as they pray in their personal prayer languages god with words that their human mind cannot understand that your perfect will is being done and established in their lives i pray that they start to see quick and immediate changes, manifestation, and transformation in their lives. In Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, I pray that you put into their remembrance to pray in tongues as much as possible to release the power of God over their lives as much as possible. In Jesus' name, don't let this day slip. Don't let this moment slip, God. But I pray for an awakening in their spirit right now. And I pray that from this day forth, they will go into a new season with you. That they will go into a new moment, a Genesis moment with you. As a result of them receiving their heavenly prayer language on today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. So how many of you pray? Okay, so I see BV and Mooton. You have prayed in tongues. Perfect. And what about the rest of you? Who prayed that prayer for the first time? Did you receive your prayer language and pray in tongues? I gotta go. I literally gotta go. I got like one minute for my meeting. Okay, Tina. So you prayed in tongues? I just want to make sure you prayed in tongues. Perfect. Monica says yes. Good. All right. I got to go. Now, if you are watching the replay or if you are having a moment right now, you can't type, just send me a DM. Tina says yes. Good. Send me a DM and let me know that you have received your personal prayer language. Um, and actually, you know what I'm gonna do today? I'm gonna do what it what the churches do. I'm gonna send you a free gift. All of you who have received your personal prayer language, send me a DM with your email address. It's gonna be an ebook, okay? I'm an author, so if you get a gift from me, it's gonna be an ebook. Send me a DM. I'm going to send you an ebook. And it's going to talk more. It's going to give you all the scriptures about prayer tongues. I'm going to teach you exactly about what they are. I'm going to teach you about the different types of tongues in the Bible. Because I don't want Satan to take this moment from you or the wrong person to hear. You know, you tell them I pray in tongues and they start to deceive you. Okay, but I want to I want to send you directly to the scripture so that you can understand what the Bible fully says. So send me a DM with your email address if you prayed in tongues for the first time. If you're watching this video in 2026... If you're watching this video in 2041, send me a DM. I don't care when or where you're watching this video. If you prayed in tongues for the first time, send me a DM with your email address and I will send you a free gift, okay? All right, you guys, I gotta go. Hope you have an amazing day and I hope this was a blessing to you. See you later.